This is mylar. It is a shiny, reflective material that can be used photographically to create some beautiful reflections and and interesting lighting and that's pretty much it but it is one of the great things to have in a small home studio and today my small home studio is smaller than usual because on the floor I've laid out an area that is eight feet square roughly it's also eight feet high and I'm going to try my very best to stay within that area for the entire of this video. So what I'm gonna do is show you two ways you can use Mylar to create amazing reflections in your images. And I'm gonna use some holographic paper to create an incredible color version of the original images at the end. So first thing I need to do is probably set a light up. And not only is this gonna be a small space tutorial, it's a one light tutorial, which is this one down here. So I'm gonna need another light stand, aren't I? So let's get a light stand, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. To help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie's gonna be the model for this photo session. And as you can see, I've got everything basically set up. I've got the Mylar in place. I'm in my small space here. And it's important to actually have this set up already because I'm gonna set my camera up to my default settings, 250th of a second, my flash sync speed, f5.6 for a reasonable depth of field, and ISO 200, my native ISO. No flash gives me no picture. And that's important because, well, we've got all this shiny stuff going on around me and it's a possibility if you set that before and then bring the shiny stuff in, you might actually get some light bouncing in that you weren't expecting. Yeah, we've got complete control of the light. So let's talk about that. The main light for this whole setup is this. It's the Flashpoint Explore 300 Pro. Now there's a really specific reason I've gone with this flash. If you can think what it is, then pop it in the comments right now because the answer might not be the first one that comes to mind. Because if you're thinking it's got something to do with the 300 watt second power, it's actually not that, it's this. The feature I'm interested in is the modeling lamp. The Explore 300 has a really bright modeling lamp. So I can see it's bouncing off the Mylar, it's reflecting onto the wall. The trouble is, if you have a room with lights in, you might find those lights are also bouncing off the Mylar. So here's a little tip. If you go into the menu by holding the little light bulb button, I can change not only the brightness of the lamp, but I can also change the white balance. So if I change it to its warmest tone, now I can see which of these lights is actually coming from the flash. So I can make sure it's all in the right position. I think that's probably about right, actually. Let's take a test photo and see how this looks. Okay, Sophie, here we go. Now remember, the color of the modeling lamp is just that, the modeling lamp. It's not going to affect your flash color. So what you see at the flash color is the white balance you've dialed into your camera. You might notice I don't have any light modifiers on the front of this and that's on purpose because the Explore 300 actually has a built-in reflector and it's a fairly small size. But weirdly, the size really makes a difference and you want to have a smaller light source as possible. In a small space like this, eight feet square, you don't have a lot of room to back your light up and make it smaller using distance. So I need to make my light source as small as possible in the space I've got. And I can make it even smaller by using a snoot. So I'll pop a snoot on the front of this. Now it is gonna take away at least two stops of light. So I'm gonna increase my flash power from 1 32nd power to 1 8th power. That's two more stops of light. Let's take a test photo, see what we get. And now we have much more dramatic lighting. We have crisper reflections off the Mylar. Our shadows are deeper and richer because the light isn't bouncing around our little space as much as it was before. Yeah, this is definitely how we're gonna work. So I think we're probably good to go. But before I do, I'm actually gonna turn the room lights off because now when I move the light around, I'll be able to see which bits of the light are actually gonna hit Sophie and which bits are going to miss. So that could be a really useful tip, but unfortunately you won't be able to see me in the video. So let's turn the lights back on again. And well, I'm just gonna take my chances. So uh, Sophie, are you ready? Okay, let's take some photos like this. Here we go. Quite easy to overlook in a small space but there's always alternative angles so I'm going to work around my little eight feet square and just try and find a different position to capture some different looking images. Work 
working very nicely, but the color is, well, quite monochrome. So maybe we should add some color to this scene. And there are several ways I could do this. The easiest way perhaps is just to add a gel to my snoot. Now, the snoot that we've got, you'll find links in the video description to all of the gear I'm using, actually comes with a set of colored gels. So I'm gonna add on a sort of yellow gel. Now, being a modeling lamp that's already fairly warm in tone, what I'm seeing isn't the color I'm going to get. So let's take a test photo and see what this looks like with a yellow gel. Okay, Sophie, here we go. And the end result is, well, yellow, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> well, very yellow indeed. And that's okay if you want to have a yellow color. And obviously you could add different colors in here to get different effects. But what if you wanted a blue color? Well, you can actually get a blue color, not with gels at all, but simply by adjusting your white balance. And for that matter, if you wanted an orange color, you could probably go the other way. I'm gonna take my white balance to a custom white balance of 3200K. And yeah, I think this probably works better as a color because it fits in with that kind of ripply look that we're after. If you're after just a single color in your shots, you can either go for gels or you can do it in camera. But if you want multiple colors in your picture, well, you can do that too. Hang on. So this is holographic paper. I mean, it's not holographic at all, but it is pearlescent and it has a whole range of different colors depending on what angle you look at this. And I'm gonna use this as a random gel color generator. Now, if we had more room, I could put this in front of the light like this and beam through it, but we're limited in space. So I'm actually gonna place this next to the Mylar. And because I have a snoot, I can actually position this. So the light from this actually hits it, passes through, adds color, bounces off the Mylar, then passes through again, which adds more color, and then lands on Sophie. Now that might affect my exposure. It will affect my exposure. And I'm gonna take a test photo and see what we get. So let's get my camera. Let's put it to say one quarter power. Let's try that. My white balance has been reset, by the way, to 5200K. And as a result, I'm getting white light, but I'm also getting this colored light coming in as well. And the color is very random, which I think fits in really well with Sophie's dress. All I need to do is just perfect the position. So I could spend ages fine tuning it, but if Sophie moves or if I move anything, then it's all gonna change anyway. So once again, I'm gonna take some photos and adjust as I go. So let's start by moving the light across like this. Looking at the light hitting Sophie's face. I can see it's on her face now. Right, let's take a few photos. Here we go. If you've got a willing assistant and you don't mind the even more random nature of the reflections, asking someone just to ripple the mylar just a little bit will create a whole bunch of new reflections. The smaller you make your light, then the more sharp and crisp these reflections are gonna be. Now in a small studio space, actually getting my light closer to the mylar makes it effectively slightly bigger and creates softer background reflections. If I slide my light all the way to the other side of my eight feet of space, then it becomes relatively smaller and the reflections become a lot crisper. So experimenting with position is a great way to get a range of different pictures. really make these colors as rich as possible, I've actually doubled up the holographic paper. So every time I move the light around or the mylar, the colors and the pattern is gonna be a little bit different, but really, really vibrant. I think I managed to do that entire photo session without stepping outside of this eight foot square space, which is quite a challenge, but that is the reality of photography. Sometimes you don't have a lot of room. One thing I would give you as an extra bit of advice, whatever size space you've got, try and keep your mylar as crease free as possible because the little creases will actually scatter the light around. And if you think you really wanna crease your, your mylar up and get a different look, well, you will get a very different look, but that, is for another video.
Now, if you've enjoyed this video, leave me a comment down below, even if it's just to give me the thumbs up, it all helps with the algorithm. And of course, if you haven't already done so, click on the bell icon and that subscribe button. I mean, not that exact one, the one at the bottom of the video. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.